Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, but for a change, I won't start, at least not directly, with the Microsoft Patch Tuesday content. Instead, I'll first talk a little bit about the HTTP2 rapid reset denial of service attack that was discussed in a Cloudflare blog today. Cloudflare, AWS, Google, they all saw these attacks in late August being launched to basically send an enormous amount of HTTP requests to their servers. And well, the attack itself is tricky because it really abuses a feature in HTTP 2. So first, very briefly, what's so special and different about HTTP 2? The real difference when it comes to HTTP 2 is that a client and a server are able to efficiently use a single TCP connection. In HTTP 1.1, it can happen that, for example, a resource that's slow to load sort of holds back all the other responses. Well, uh, this cannot happen in HTTP 2 because the server is able to define multiple streams for multiple responses. And that way, if one particular response currently doesn't have anything to send, that bandwidth can be used by another response. In some ways, uh, I always describe it, and it may be a little bit oversimplified, but like HTTP 2 is sort of trying to re-implement TCP on the application layer. And well, with that, we also have the ability to reset connections. So normally, if let's say you are loading a page and uh, while you're starting to read the page, you decide to click on a link uh, before the page is fully loaded in HP 1.1, well, the TCP connection would basically be stopped with a TCP reset and a new connection loading the new page would be started if that connection hasn't already been open. So uh, that way, basically, we can stop receiving any responses for any of the prior requests. In HP2, we do have the option to send HP2 resets. So this is now on the HP2 layer. And we basically tell the server, hey, that particular image that you started sending me, I no longer need it. Maybe I just you know, scrolled up in the page. And that particular image is no longer in the viewed area. On the other hand, uh, having all of these open streams, of course, uh, causes some overhead and there is a total limit of the open streams that you may have at any point of time. The server defines that in its initial responses and a typical um, number here would be a hundred different streams. And this would put sort of a sane upper limit at the resources required uh, to deal with a particular client's connection. However, if a reset is sent by the client, then the connection is freed up and a new connection may be established immediately. But there is a delay in cleaning up uh, the connection after the reset. So what's happening here is that the attacker is setting up a TCP connection, then using one TCP connection as intended by HP2 to send a large number of sessions and then immediately sends resets for these sessions and then establishes even more sessions. So it's really sort of one of those application layer floods. If you want to have a TCP equivalent. I think it's a little bit sort of like some of uh, the SynFlood attacks, but uh, on the application layer. In the attacks against Cloudflare, the attacker was able to send 200 million requests per second using 20,000 compromised machines. A 20,000 machine botnet is in no ways large. And the Cloudflare also puts as a comparison here that the entire web usually sees one to three billion requests. So uh, this is basically sort of 10, 20% of all of the requests that are being seen on the entire World Wide Web being created just by a botnet of 20,000 machines. Cloudflare was able uh, to mitigate some of these attacks uh, using filtering they're doing. And uh, well, that gets us now to today's Microsoft Patch Tuesday. 
Because one of the attacks being mitigated by patches released by Microsoft today is this rapid reset vulnerability, also known by its CVE number 2023-44487. If you don't want to apply the patch, another suggested workaround by Microsoft is basically just to disable HP2 and just uh, do with HP 1.1. It's actually also possible, I haven't really seen this discussed yet, that HP3 is also sort of vulnerable to this because it's really sort of just like HP2 over UDP or Quick. So uh, we'll see if uh, anything comes of that, but HP 1.1, you're safe or apply Microsoft's patch that was released today. Microsoft fixed 105 different vulnerabilities in total, which also includes one Chromium vulnerability that was actually already addressed earlier. There's sort of two other kind of noteworthy vulnerabilities because uh, they have already been exploited. One is a WordPad information disclosure. And that's sort of an interesting one in that it's yet another case where you could have some embedded content that reaches out to an SMB URL and in doing so it will basically send your credentials in a weekly hashed format. So you have seen this in so many different pieces of software now. WordPad just delayed Latest example. It's sort of interesting how simple software like this is always getting you into trouble. Also, Skype for Business, there's an elevation of privilege vulnerability, CV 2023 41763. Now, this is the Skype for Business server product that's affected here. The description doesn't really sound that bad. Uh, the IP address and port numbers may be disclosed. And again, this one is already being exploited. Yet again, we got a bunch of vulnerabilities being patched in the layer two tunneling protocol, a total of nine critical vulnerabilities this month. And then also yet again, I think third, fourth month in a row now, where we have critical vulnerabilities being patched in the Microsoft message queue. And this one has sort of the highest CVSS score today of 9.8. I would still rate this as an average patch Tuesday. The uh, reset issue, we'll have to see what the impact will be, how many of these attacks we'll see. So if you see it, really the quick fix is just uh, disable HP2 and uh, then apply the patch. Not 100% sure what the patch is actually doing, like how it's mitigating this particular uh, vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.